May I stand on the already established protocol? Your Excellencies, on behalf of the Royal Majesty, Eze Pararebi City 12, Eze Eliku, may I, on behalf of the Potakot Council of Chiefs, the entire good people of Potakot, welcome Your Excellencies to. The administration of Excellencies, our people, the good people of Portacourt, are indeed very happy and grateful to the administration of our governor for all the projects that he has been executing in Portacourt City and the ones that are still going on. These road projects will enhance traffic flow and also stimulate economic activities in the state and indeed Portacourt City. Your Excellency, the projects have in various ways impacted positively on the economic well-being of our youths and women who are involved in one way or the other during the construction of these road projects. We are very happy. We are grateful to you. We thank you for all that you have been doing for us. We say God bless you, God keep you, and grant you more wisdom to carry on more activities. And the Padakwa people will continue to follow you in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Here you see a way. Make cow, make cow, make cow. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to three laws with some dance performance, may I invite the Obum Nabali women group.
Image.com Global Theatre. Please can we put our hands together for them as they take the stage. Thank you.
distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Next in line is Egelege Cultural Group of Obumna Bali, and they will be presenting a wrestling contest between Obum versus Abali.
Description the Honorable Commissioner for Wax River State, Eloka Tasi Amadi Esquire. Your Excellency, the Governor of River State, our special guest of honor, His Excellency Al Haji Ibrahim Idris, Commander of the Order of the Niger. Jakaran Sokoto, Omachi Atta Igala, Sadaun Anupe, former governor of Kogi State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of River State, the Right Honorable Speaker of the University House of Assembly, Your Excellencies, please permit me to rely on protocols previously established. I welcome you once again to today's ceremony for the commissioning of the dualized Eastern Bypass. Prior to this time, we had a 7.3 meter wide single carriageway, which had no drains and was grossly inadequate for the volume of traffic on this route. But today, all that is history. And we now have a dualized road, which the typical cross section is 18.5 meters wide from the end of one drain to the end of the drain on the other side. Each of the drains is 1.2 meters wide and has a total length of 6.7 kilometers. You have two carriageways, each measuring 7.3 meters wide on either side, separated by a 1.5 meter wide median. The total road length is 3.348 kilometers. That is all that is visible to the eye, but it's not, the project was not as easy as it sounds. This area predominantly is swamp, and some of it is reclaimed area. We had some of the most challenging excavations to deal with. For better understanding, the time it takes us to dig, to excavate 100 meters here, you could excavate one kilometer on stable soil. There are areas on this road where we had to excavate as deep as 1.3 meters to remove unsuitable material. Backfill with sharp sand all through the project, and the least areas were about 600 centimeters. After the sharp sand fill, we have a layer of sand cement mix stone base, base course, topped again with our binder course and our wearing course, giving us two layers of asphalt. Not to mention the compensations we had to pay for the expansion, electrical relocations, and all whatnot. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that apart from the beauty of the road, the convenience it offers to traffic, I said earlier that the road was inadequate, but today it caters a lot for the volume of traffic that moves through here. Thank you and welcome to the capital of River State. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to give a remark on behalf of the contractor Julius Berger, Nigeria PLC, may I invite the regional manager, Jorgen Fischer. Welcome to His Excellency Neesum Esenwo Vike, the Executive Governor of River State, the Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency Alaji Ibrahim Idris, former Governor of Kogi State, Her Excellency Mrs. Ipalibo Hari Banigo, the Deputy Governor of River State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to stand on existing protocol. Julius Berger PLC welcomes all of you today to this commissioning ceremony. 
This commissioning project today of the Eastern Bypass Road dualization is a major link to connect the Ogunabali roundabout with the Moscow Road. Together with the extension of the Eastern Bypass along the Sandville area, which is already under construction, is this project a part of an important north-south link to improve the traffic flow between the Rebisi flyover and the Moscow Road? Excellency, all your road and infrastructure projects change the picture and the quality of the entire city today and shows evidence of a successful development of River State. Today, we are proud to deliver you the next project for this successful development. Our board and executive management is indeed very grateful for once again trusting Julius Berger PLC for the realization of this project. Please let me take this opportunity to thank all of those involved in the project. First of all, the Ministry of Works under the leadership of Honorable Commissioner Eloka Tazi Amadi and his entire team. Also, I want to thank my own project team under the leadership of engineer Tana Özakan and his entire team. And last but not least, a special thank to the good people of River State, especially the host community here, for their support, patience and understanding during the construction time. Thank you very much, and God bless this project, and God bless you all. the Deputy Governor, the Vice Honorable Speaker of the State House of Assembly, the Chairman of TDP River State and Kogi State, former Deputy Speaker House of Representatives and former Minister of Transportation, our dear leaders that are here, traditional rulers, there's a primary embassy, our Council of Chiefs that are here, the members of the State House of Assembly, the Mayor of Port Harcourt, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, our special guest of honor, let me on behalf of the good people of River State, most sincerely thank you for accepting our invitation to commission this particular route today. It is not easy at this critical period for you to leave your state, but in spite of everything you are doing, you still oblige us. God will bless you for that. 
Your yeah. Excellency, the Commissioner of Works has said it all. But what is important is that this was a project that was supposed to be between us and NDDC. I was with the Minister of Energy and the and the sole administrator of NDDC. I'm happy he's here. We agreed to share the funding of this project 50-50%. As I speak to you, they ran away. They never brought a dime. But look at their headquarters here. They're enjoying the road now. It's unfortunate, and I've always said it. I've never seen a corporate body that will say they will enter into a partnership with the government and then they will not fulfill their own promise. I've never seen such in my life. It's only in this part of the world. They are happy as a road, they are happy as a drainage, and now it's going to give beauty to this their edifice. But I'll make it uncomfortable for them. Very much, I'll make it uncomfortable for them. If, you, if, you, if, if this is where you operate, and you tell the government, and that is why even when they make promise to communities, they will abandon it. If you can play this trick to a government, well, you can imagine what will happen to other communities when they are dealing with them. It's such a shame. Well, I'm not surprised. It's, I, we know the type of government you are running under your administration. No, you will never make promise to Nigerians and fulfill that uh, uh, promise. It's evil with character. Continue. Nigerians are waiting for you to chase people away in 2023. Nobody will uh, allow this kind of uh, character to be in charge of government. Huh? Now, it, 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 most people may have forgotten how this road used to be. You can come now and see the dualization. It looks so simple. But all of us who are from here know how it used to be. And I thank the Speaker that they've completed this road. And we have also paid them 100%, so we're not owing them too. So I, I find this road is concerned we're paid 100%. I thank them for commitment and thank the Minister of Works for making sure that today is a, a reality. Uh, for us, somebody called me yesterday and said, I will not tired of commissioning. I said, until May 29, 2023, we can not be tired. That is the day our contract will end with the people of uh, River State. So we'll continue to do what we're supposed to do till May 29, 2023. So I told the person, well, some of you are saying that our tenure ends now. But if our tenure does not end now, then we'll continue to do the work till our tenure will end. And I can only find this in PDP states. I can only find this in PDP states. And because I can imagine what is happening. Somebody said, I didn't sign letter. Somebody said, I signed letter. Somebody said, you went to America. Somebody said, all kinds of crises. Well, they have abandoned governance. Everybody is moving to London. That's where governance is going from. I've never seen a, 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 a well, Nigerian can still be patient to wait for these people. It's most unfortunate, very unfortunate. Let me use the opportunity to clear certain things. I was going through the constitutional amendment as made by the National Assembly, and I discovered that this is a party that talks about independence of the judiciary. This is a government that talks about autonomy of the judiciary. And I told Nigerians that all these things are fake. They don't mean it. They want a situation where they will continue to bully the judiciary. What happened in the Senate? The Senate killed the amendment and got the welfare of the judiciary. Killed it. It's so, it's so unfortunate. These are people saying they want independence of the judiciary. These are people saying they want the autonomy of the judiciary. And the same people killed they did an amendment concerning the welfare of judicial officers. Then how can they be independent? It has no wonder one of their governors can make a reckless statement abusing the judge because of the judgment. It's, it's only in this country you can see that. And that's why they don't want the independence of judiciary. 
so that they can come up any day and bully them and do all kinds of things and threaten them. If anybody wants the autonomy of judiciary, the person will not be in support of killing the amendment that has to talk about welfare of judicial officers. It's such a shame. I don't know why the National Assembly members are here, but I've seen my senators are there. I know that APC controls even to thousands of members of the Senate because they don't believe in the, uh, the autonomy of judiciary. They killed it. Now they are coming up now to say, okay, the one we did against whom we want to change it, must we continue to protest before you do the right thing? Must we continue to protest? If anybody who's a senator here, I still go to the chambers. It's unfortunate. What are you going to do? When you cannot give judicial officers a welfare. Look at the judge today retired. Look at the poverty. But when you not have some people are living, look at the quantity of the thing, the quality of life you are coming with. It's such a shame. May God not forgive you people. Except you go back and correct it. May God not forgive you people. For the heavy sin you have committed against the judiciary. It's unfortunate. Look at the governor making a reckless statement simply because a judge made a judgment according to his own opinion, which you are entitled to appeal. The court of first instance, you have the court of appeal, you have the Supreme Court. And you are not saying that, I'm sorry. You are sorry, what? You have got somebody a thief in the market. You are coming out to say, I'm sorry. What are you sorry? It's late. That you are sorry. We members of the public who don't take the they are sorry. And it is the style of APC administration. That's what they do. So they can do all the kind of things that cannot move this country forward. So it's important. And I can assure you, everybody who cares, it doesn't matter the name call anybody may call. PDP will continue with this matter. We will believe that one day there will be a pronouncement on this matter, finally. One day, if they like or you abuse anybody, we will continue to pursue the matter. We will not let you sleep. Since they say we will not sleep, you too, you will not uh, sleep. That's what it's supposed to, to be. This is the first time this issue has come up in this country. We have never had it. Nobody has gone to court to seek for interpretation of a governor who has defended from one party to the other. This is the first time. And so you look new to people say, ah, it cannot happen. Can you remove a governor? It is better for the court to make a pronouncement. So everybody will have to be careful. You give somebody an umbrella, the next day he, he, he defects. Uh, yes, this will come. He said, no, let me join them. So yes, he will not be against you. You carry the vote of another party. I join another party. Can you transfer vote? You work hard for yourself. Somebody to win the election. Tomorrow the person says, no, I have defected. If you are defected, leave the seat. If you know it is easy. And this will checkmate most of these political habits. Who will never sit one place? Looking for excuses here and there. I was insulted by my old chairman. I'm leaving the party. Look at it. They did not allow me to bring a counselor. I'm leaving the party. Because you believe that you cannot, they cannot take your seat. This is a clear example to starting democracy. To starting democracy. So that if our party had done it earlier, when people were leaving the National Assembly, joining the army, we wouldn't have had the problem we have today. And that's what a problem of party leadership. People cannot come up and take the bull by the horn. So, Governor Omai, the rest are sure that PDP will continue this matter down to the Supreme Court. We will continue with the matter. We will not, we will not say the word for them. We will. So don't be saying you know those who are, there are nothing that those who are, we are PDP people. We went to court. So don't say people behind you. Which behind? Is it not PDP? So they are. Am I not a member of PDP? So I should say against my party, I will not do that. So don't be, if you want to call them, call them. Nobody should be afraid of uh, 
or this uh, thing they are talking about. Is that I will with those people who are, who are responsible. Who told you that we were not responsible? <laughs> you don't talk to those who are afraid of who? I'm involved. So, you, you can't take what our property and he says we should close our mouth. How can we close our mouth? I say those who are behind the PDP is behind them. We are all PDP members. If your friend don't want to tell you, me and I'm involved. So nobody should uh, threaten us. Don't threaten us. You are not our friend. You are not a member of our party. Leave what belongs to our party. Give us our property back. That's what we're asking for. We did not beat you. As soon as you want to come back, we'll look at it. Whether we will, we'll, have, we'll, have to come back. we'll look at it and see whether we'll help you. Even if you come now, it's late. We don't want you to come and carry those problem areas and come and infect us there. No, we don't want that. And our leader, let me also say this as one of the leaders of our party. You know, this is the thing I'm talking about, impunity. You see, you see, you see, in a party, I was in Madrid when I was reading and watching what a deputy governor ranting in the media. A deputy governor threatening the party that the alternative to PDP. This is the same deputy governor that they were kneeling down to beg for us to give them umbrella. Today has the F country to threaten PDP. Such a shame. These are the same people. When they were denied ticket under APC, they were running head and scatter, begging everybody to give them umbrella. And we gave them umbrella. We went and measured the fact that they won that election. Today, that deputy governor will be ranting. A deputy governor will come out on television to tell PDP the alternative. I have written to the national chairman of the party. If they don't consider this disciplinary committee against the deputy governor, I will invoke the sections of the party and I will make sure they must discipline the deputy governor. He said, and he lost his election at local government when they do. He lost. And he will come out on television to threaten the party, the alternative. Look at the deputy governor. It's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate for a party. A deputy governor is wearing khaki. Look at. Look at. Hey? I, I, I have never seen a thing like this in my life. This is the first time I can see a deputy governor come out in the television to tell the party if you don't do this. Who is his father? Can you come and tell the whole party where we are as governors? Now that he has started the trouble, let him wait. We will make sure he will never have rest. You don't come and threaten us. It won't work. And it will never work. Nobody will do what you want them to do. It will not happen. Threatening that, oh, you have an alternative. Why did you go to that alternative when the rain was beating you? You saw alternative, you didn't go. You ran down to a PDP. Bank everywhere. Say, please. Don't disgrace us. Give us. We will be loyal. This is the loyal now. It's to threaten the party. We are waiting for them. We are waiting for them. So, I said it because we are one of the leaders of our party. Tomorrow, they say we can start it. I'm, I'm quiet. I don't look for trouble. But don't look for my own trouble, too. But I can't be in a party where the deputy governor will threaten the party. I don't say I should keep uh, quiet. He will be lost properly. So the next time you will know, Kaki will be later. How that Kaki went in the way, no be later. Deceiving people, Kaki, Kaki. So nobody should take all this. PDP is formidable and ready to win the election in 2023. Who is ready? It's not the ranting. Ranting of people who cannot win their local uh, government. You, you are running the election, you fail in your local government. And you have the front three to threaten a whole party. What is your contribution in the party in the first place? Why did we not win in your local government? If you are that strong, why did we lose? It's 
only those who can win their local government that can say, look, if you don't give me, not somebody who has lost his local government will come and threaten us. A loser threatening us. So, Alida, let me invite you to come and talk to reverse people and commission this group. Thank you and God bless you. Your Excellency, Chief Nyosim Ezenwanwike, C.O.M. G.S.S.R.S. P.O.S. Africa. Her Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Apolibo Hari Banigo, D.S.S.R.S the Deputy Governor of River State. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I am delighted to be with you today in Portacourt River State for the commissioning of another landmark project in the state initiated and completed by Governor of the state, His Excellency Ezenwa Nyasum Wiki COA. It is obvious that River State, in the last six and a half years, since 2015, under the leadership of the current PDP administration of Governor Nyasum Wiki, had witnessed prolification of projects ranging from in industrial industrialization infrastructural, human development, educational, and technological development that has improved the socioeconomic life of the people in the state. Also, the laudable idea on the invitation of the former state governors state governors former state governors, leaders, and top party notches to commission projects in the state in the last six and a half years was an indicator that the present administration believed strongly in probity, transparency, and accountability to the people. Hence, his decision to render stewardship through some party stillbirths. The PDP Former governors, forum is solidly behind the record breaking leadership and achievement being witnessed in River State under Governor Nelson Wiki. There is no doubt in my mind that Wiki led administration in River State had changed the face of development from the previous conception stage to completion stages, which had restored the confidence of the people in leadership, particularly in River State, through provision of dividends of democracy under PDP. The current administration has not only driven development of the state in all areas, but on air the potentials of opposition party, PDP, not only in River State, but Nigeria at large, as the governor remained the best all-round performing governor in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Not dependent on federal allocation, but rigged internally generated revenue idea. The ongoing and completed multi-billion naira projects scattered all over, all around the state, ranging from construction, reconstruction of roads, building of flyover bridges, hospitals, schools, electricity provision of pipe bomb water, 
and other social amenities, employment opportunities, and prompt payment of monthly salary to state workers stand out the current administration in the state. I have no doubt in my mind that the growing glamour championed by Governor Nyes Mwike for appropriate fiscal federation, federalism, new revenue allocation formula, and collection of value added start VAT by state, those subject to judicial adjudication, when resolved, will give more financial muscle to the state to do more in area of development and service to the people. I am highly elected to identify with the success being recorded by River State Governor, my brother, His Excellency Nze Ngo Nyasi Nwike on the PDP platform. And um, my intention to continue to support him with prayers and well wishes to continue in this trend between now and 2023. For His Excellency Governor Wiki, he remained an asset to the PDP as we look forward for more progressive role in the next dispensation. <laughs> Finally, I congratulate His Excellency for this great feat and the good people of River State while soliciting for more of their cooperation and support to enable the current administration bequeath a lasting legacy through more project development and progress of the state. My dear brother, you have done very well. To me, I believe not only River State, but the whole Nigeria will remember you for what you have done. I wish you all the best. I congratulate you and I congratulate the people of River State and I wish you all the best. Good health, long life, and prosperity. And uh, finally, I'm thanking all the people of River State to have blessed you with a good governor who has you at heart and who has been able to do all he could as a leader. Go. I finally commission the great work he has done here. And whether anybody likes it or not, it is a road that I believe in, in another 50 years it will continue to be what it is. I wish you all the best. In the name of Almighty Allah, the Compassionate, I commission this beautiful road, built by our Governor Chief Nesim Wike, for the use of the people of this community, the people of uh, River State, and of course Nigeria in general. I wish you all the best, and uh, by in God's grace. <laughs> Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.